this is going to be a great time to talk a little bit about ministry in community. That's what our topic is tonight, is just to talk about ministry in our community. And the reason that we have selected these panelists is because all of these people up here have demonstrated a not just a burden and a desire, but they are actually practicing ministry in community. And so we know the word ministry just means service. And so we want to do our part as a body of believers. And uh, we want to serve more in our community. We want to do more. Our theme is much more in 2024. And we want to do more in our community. We want to do more about getting outside of these walls and getting involved in ministry in our community. We truly do believe that what God has done in our lives, it is a light that shineth in a dark place and that the church and the body of believers that uh, is in this area is a lighthouse that does shine light and hope and love to, to everyone that's, um, you know, that's here that we rub shoulders with, the people we go to school with, people we go to work with, people in our, our neighborhoods. And there's, there's, a, there's a mission field right here in South Bavard. And uh, I'm so happy for these panelists. Let me introduce you to them. First of all, uh, Mayor Rob Medina, thank you so much, uh, Mayor, for all that you do in Palm Bay. I just want to say this publicly because I say it privately, but you are indeed a gift to Palm Bay. And uh, we recognize that, and we are so thankful that God, and I know you give God the credit and the praise for that, that God has put you in that position. But I know you're not just there uh, as a career choice, you're there with a mission. And I thank you for what you do in Palm Bay and uh, for the faith-based community, at least for the East Wind Ministries. We're, we're so thankful and uh, we're gonna support you in anything that, that we can do. And then we're so happy to have Freddie uh, Woodford with us who is uh, with Love, Inc. I don't know if you're familiar with Love in the Name of Christ, but they do a tremendous work uh, here in Bavard County. And uh, they have chapters all over. In fact, we first met Freddie um, when uh, she was working down in the Fort Lauderdale area. And she was working with a very close friend of ours, Sister Melanie Elms, who we know from her gift in music. And of course, her husband, Brother David Elms, and, and their great church there in uh, Davie, Florida. But uh, she had Sister Melanie Elms on the board there with her at uh, Love, Inc. down in, in uh, is that, uh, what county is that? Broward? Broward County. And then she moved up here, and so she's doing a great work. And our church, East Wind, is one of the partner churches with Love, Inc. And uh, she'll tell you a little bit more about what they do, but we're so thankful for how they serve the community. Thank you, Freddie, and welcome to uh, East Wind Pentecostal Church. Thank you for being here. And then we're so happy to have uh, uh, Brother Jeff Blackman with us. Brother Jeff Blackman is the director of our prison ministry. He and his team, what a great job they do reaching... Uh, a number of people that are incarcerated uh, on a regular basis in the ministry, and we were going over some of the numbers uh, uh, last, uh, I think it was, was it Sunday night? We were going over some of the uh, numbers, and they've baptized over, over a, a, almost 100 people in 2023. In, uh, <laughs> that are incarcerated. And we've said, you know, they can lock up the bodies, but they can't lock up the soul. And there, there's a lot of hungry people that are incarcerated. And thank you for having a bird. You and, and your team, Brother Scott, all of them do a tremendous job. And thank you so much, Brother Blackman. And then we're happy that Annie Weaver's with us, who's the director of our Hands for Healing Ministry. <laughs> they do a tremendous amount of work. And uh, Sister Annie has had a burden for this ministry for a long time. And she really... Uh, spearheads uh, a lot of the partnership that we have with Second Harvest and uh, being able to uh, base right here from this property and feed uh, over 1,500 people a month, uh, which I now, I think, uh, is one of the largest nonprofit food distribution uh, centers in all of Central Florida. And uh, we're thankful for the great work that they do. It's a, it's a, it really is just a, a love, you know, a heartbeat that she has and it's a labor of love into our community, and it's a, it's a great blessing to a lot of people, and we're thankful that it's uh, one of the extensions of East Wind. So thank you, Sister Annie, for all the hard work that you're doing with Hands for Healing. 
Amen. But Mayor, let me start with you. And I want to start with you. I'm going to ask you this question, then we'll have each of the panelists uh, answer it as well. But um, I just want to ask you a question as we kind of sort of unpack this, this subject. What can we do as born-again Christians to have a positive impact on our community? So the very first thing, we're called to shine our light wherever we go and being positive. See, what we're doing here today is fellowshipping. We're worshiping. But the mission field, as you said, Pastor Dave, is outside these four walls. And, and it's a passion for me. It's a calling for me. Because before I came to Christ, I thought God was a faraway God in a distant land. I had no relationship with him. And yet I saw him in a man when I was working in government. And I received Jesus Christ, and I've been on fire for him ever since. It was after 2001, when the towers fell, that I found the fervor and a relationship mm. for God. You see, I was in the mission field, and I was hurting. Anyone that doesn't have Jesus is hurting. Yes, that's so true. And it's my call to lay hands on them, bring them to repentance, but the way to do that is with love. We're all part of the same body of Christ. Mm -hmm. You can call me the pinky toe. But you don't have balance without that pinky toe. <laughs> so to my brothers and sisters from Eastwind, I'm encouraged by your participation and what you want to do outside of the four walls of church. Now, I'd like to take this opportunity because there is more in 24. Yes. However, the family Christmas extravaganza, which is a body of Christ, over 10 churches, and East Wind is one. <laughs> we go out into the community and we preach the gospel in a secular venue to people that otherwise wouldn't be coming to church. They go to a secular venue and then we bring the church to them. Yeah. And yes, they do receive Jesus Christ. I truly believe it is our motto that there's more with the family Christmas extravaganza. We always say there's more. There's always more because God is the God of plentiful. Yeah. He doesn't run out of any type of supply. And so that is, that has been the mission field for me. It is a passion. It is a calling. And I will walk through the journey of life. Uh, my goal, and I, this may seem a little strange, but I, I want to be like Enoch. Mm -hmm. I want to walk so closely with my Lord and Savior Amen. that maybe one day I'll be here and then, oh, the mayor's gone to heaven. <laughs> I won't even die. I just transcend into heaven. I want to have that level of faith. I want to have that relationship. And I truly believe when you talk about baptizing and saving souls, that's our mission. That is our goal. That is what we're all called to do. And the body of Christ mobilizing in a time like this does not take our Lord and Savior by surprise. Amen. Pastor David, I'm telling you, the time is now. There is a mission field. Amen. And we're called, even if it's just to spread the seeds, let somebody else harvest it. But that's our calling. Anyway, I could take up the whole segment. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, Freddie, we'll pose the same question to you. But before you answer the question, uh, tell, for people that may not know about Love, Inc., tell them a little bit about what Love, Inc. is about. Okay, so Love, Inc., love in the name of Christ. Uh, there's about 120 affiliates around the country. Um, we mobilize Christian churches to come together to help people in need in a way that's going to change their life in Christ. Uh, so we're, we really believe in putting the hand up and the hand out together, that they can't go. You can't just do a handout if you don't have a hand up and vice versa. We need to work together. And, and everyone grows in the, their relationship with the Lord in relationships. So we're all about relationship. And 
kind of started for me back in 2013. I was the uh, executive director at a crisis pregnancy center here in town, and the, the Lord showed me something I had never seen before, and that, and that was that although we love those girls, the day they came in the room, tried to support them, give them the right choice, uh, tomorrow they were more pregnant and more in a crisis than they were today, and we did not know them. We did not know what happened to them or their baby. And as he started showing me this, uh, I started meeting Love, Inc. people. So I, Christy was my first person. She's a very close friend. She's the executive director here. So I, I started volunteering and then ended up working in, at Love, Inc. here. I, my husband and I moved to Broward. I started a Love, Inc. there because I believe it's a move of God to bring the church together. It's, it's a huge job to, for, for a church to help people in need in a way that's actually going to do some good that's going to be deep and lasting and and transformational it is a hard work it's complicated it's messy relationship is always messy but it is so so much deeper mm. so that that's what love inc does we work with people in need in ways that are going to change their life for christ and quite honestly when we're in transformational relationships we're all changed it's not just them it's us as well Amen. And then, thank you, that's awesome. I was gonna ask you too to, to just maybe share some uh, insight on that, what, as born again Christians, what we can do uh, as, as a body of believers here to really uh, impact our community as individuals. Yes, so sitting out here, every one of you is gifted by the Lord in very special ways. I w I'm, gonna, I'm gonna assert that there are some of you that are underutilized. You just haven't figured out how, to, how, how can the Lord use me? And it could be because your particular church just doesn't do what you're good at. And that's why Love Inc.'s here, to bring the body together, to, to, uh, get, to have your gifts and talents be utilized by the Lord for what he caused you to be here for. Um, you could work in our call center uh, mentoring our clients weekly. You get a lot of training for that. You could work in... in um, other areas of our ministry, but there are things that we can do right here in each body of Christ. Love Inc. has about 56 or 66 partner churches, um, all coming together with different gifts and talents. Every church as a body has the special mission the Lord has given them to do as well. So when we put all that together, very exciting things happen. Awesome. Thank you, Freddie. Thank you. <laughs> and Jeff, tell us a little bit about what your, your heartbeat is for how uh, the church community can get involved in making a difference in the community. Pastor, I do uh, appreciate this opportunity uh, to come here before my brothers and sisters and just to uh, share, you know, what it takes and what it, the passion it is to have the, that call to go out uh, to be able to minister to the men that are in prison. It all begins, basically, you got to have a burden for something. And you want to, uh, in the kingdom of God, God has not called any of us basically just to sit on the pew and not do anything. But we are, like I said, we are all part of the body of Christ. And there is something that we all can do in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. So uh, the burden begins with, you know, seeing those men that are out there. And, and, and some people like, you know, when I first went into the prison, you know, I, I didn't know that was going to be my burden. As I went into there, and they kept locking those doors up behind me, I'm like, man, I'm not going to get out of here. <laughs> you know, but when you get in there and you find out that they are human beings just like we are. They are souls just like we are. We were all lost. And there's a burden out there. And when you begin to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to them, and you begin to see those men begin to cry because they make mistakes. The Bible says we all have sinned. And you're reaching out, and, they, and you see them, and you're able to touch their lives, and hope that they to make a difference. And you ask yourself, how can I get involved? How can I do something like that? Well, you never know until you make that first step of faith, and you go out and you go in there, and you never know what your calling may be. So, all I'm just encourage my brothers and sisters here in East Wind, step out, you know, go out, you know, and see what the Lord would do, because God has something for all of us in here to do. Amen. So just it all begins with having that burden and see what God would do and whatever your hands find to do, do it as all as unto Jesus Christ. 
Amen. That's what the first thing. You're not here to do it for yourself, but you're here to do it for God. And I uh, thank you, Pastor. I hope that helps a little Absolutely. bit. You know, but uh, thank you. That's all I have to say for that. All right. That's so good, Brother Jeff. Thank you. <laughs> Sister Annie. Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, I'm just glad to be here tonight, too. We started this ministry a while back. It's been almost 10 years. And it was, we had a little bitty ministry here at the church, 30 people, 30 years, like they say. But I was like, we need to help other people, not just a few people. We need to get out there and really help people. And we have done that. And we used to have a Bible study, and we've been talking about that, and we need to get that back going and having a Bible study. But one day, Pastor, I know I never told you this, but we, after we went to Honduras and Haiti, we came back, and, and I'm like, you know, Lord, I, when I first got in church, you know, I wanted to be a missionary, you know, get and we are, we are all missionaries, you know, just like the Bible says. But one day I was standing out there, and there were just cars everywhere. And it was just like, the, I just heard the Lord said, this is your mission. Field. Absolutely. So we don't have to get on a plane and go to another country. That's right. That's the pastor's job. No. <laughs> <laughs> but we can, our mission field is here. Amen. Open the door. Look out there. It's out there. It's not just in here we got to reach people here but we need to reach people out there we stop in the middle of a, a food line mm. and we pray with people yeah, and you know people get all upset because the line backs up I'm like but this is what we're here for is to pray and to help people and to see people come to church from the food ministry and that's my burden is to figure out another way to get more people to come in here to hear the gospel Amen. huh we got to talk. <laughs> and, and I believe that's so going to start too with the, the Bible studies and, and just opening that back up. And when you got a thousand people coming through, it's not always easy to stop and do what we need to do, but we'll even pull them to the side and, and then we'll pray with them and talk to them and just to see they're crying and just they're hungry and they're hurting. And that's our job as Christians is to go out and win the loss. And I believe we have an open field right out here, right here in Bavard County. Amen. Everywhere we look, there's a field. It's white. We just need harvesters to get out there and harvest the crop. Amen. You want to follow up, Mayor? Yeah, I'd like to. That, that's awesome. It's so man, good. Because that is so good. I just want to follow up with that. So oftentimes I've, you know, I've been called the Walmart pastor because I'll pray for you in the aisle. <laughs> but what I've witnessed is, we have so many believers that just don't have the boldness yeah. to share Christ. I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to share with you that don't let fear come and take a hold of you. Right. Because that is not of God. Right. That's the enemy trying to hold you down and keep a blessing from an individual that you're called to lay hands on. Mm. That you're called to speak life over. So oftentimes, we're shy because we're supposed to be meek. That's not meekness. You're giving the territory to the enemy. Mm. Let me encourage you to be bold and share your faith. You are the light. You're the salt of the earth. Mm. You're called to minister. Not just here fellowship within the body. It's to lay hands on those. Listen, I can, I can share countless experiences. But I know something that's been consistent, and that's the attack of the enemy. Right. If you can find a positive thing to say about the enemy, is he's consistent. Mm -hmm. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. Right. That's his mission. Our mission is to wipe him out before he does it. And you have the authority. Amen. And you should never fear. And whenever you feel that inkling, I am home, man. Absolutely. You pray in tongues. Come on. You pray in that spiritual language that the enemy doesn't understand. Right. And be bold. Now, what, that may look like different 
for different people, right? But I know there's a doctor here who was my favorite dentist. Oh, and this, yeah. Yeah, and this individual had to go far away. <laughs> and I, I've been waiting for him to come back. And, and you know, I Amen. figured out why. You want to know why that is? Because my spirit and his spirit are the same. Yeah. The Holy Ghost, and we never knew. But I say this to you. As doctors, at whatever profession that you have, be bold to share your faith. Yeah. Inject Jesus into the equation. Mm. That is part of the mission field. That is part of being faithful. And remember, mm. be faithful in the little things. Because you were so spot on. We all have to go out there. But we all have to find where the Lord is leading us to. And whatever that is, submit unto his authority, regardless of how you feel. And let that manifest into something greater. Because he will use you and use you again mm -hmm. and again and again. Amen. Thank you, Mayor. That's so good. Let me just follow up by asking you this question, then we'll, we'll ask all the panel. I think sometimes as Christians, there's this sense that we know we have a responsibility and a mandate to evangelize the world and to reach people that is in our sphere of influence. But I think sometimes, and maybe this is driven by culture, but we, I think, sometimes feel like we're going to kind of um, wear out our welcome or we're going to turn people away if we're real direct with trying to win people to Christ. Now, you deal with all types of groups on a daily basis as the mayor. What do you think is the best advice that you can give Christians about how to be strategic with that boldness? That's an excellent question. And I'll just share my journey. Okay. Because it doesn't matter to me who, I, who I'm in front of. They all know who I am. I am bold in Christ. But we have a weapon that's underutilized. And that's praying in us prayer language. Whenever I go out and I'm about to speak, I yield to the Holy Ghost. Mm. Whenever I have to touch a heart and soul of someone, I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. I don't know. Can I be transparent with you? I don't know what I'm going to say. I didn't know what I was going to say before I walked up here. But I was praying in the Holy Ghost. Whenever I lay hands on someone or I am ministering, because I'm constantly ministering to someone, whether I'm leading them as I lead the family Christmas extravaganza or I'm leading them in the capacity of government, I'm always looking for an opportunity to inject Jesus Christ. And I honestly don't know how that's going to work. But the Holy Spirit knows each and every one that comes before me. And it may be just one word, and that word just metamorphosizes that individual, touches the heart, opens up the heart, so that it's on fertile ground that you speak life into them. Now, I may not draw the harvest each and every time. That is a goal, Pastor David. Absolutely. But I'm satisfied that the seed was planted. And if we just take the opportunity to be faithful and planting that seed, God is going to do this. the rest. He'll bring Freddie to come over and water it. Pastor David can go ahead and harvest. But the goal is, did you plant that seed? Are you bold enough? Are you faithful enough? Are you consistent enough? Because if you're, in, if you're faithful in the little things, God is going to bring you to a different level every time. I never dreamed I'd be serving 
as mayor of the greatest city on the face of the earth. Amen. I Amen. speak that because I believe that my words are spiritual capsules that creating this city to be the greatest city on the face of the earth. Amen. Amen. I walked, and when the Lord said that I was supposed to run, I thought of different opportunities where I was supposed to run. But he corrected me. There's going to be a time where you have to be obedient in your faithfulness. This ain't about you. This is about the kingdom. And if he sacrificed for us, the least we could do is to listen and obey what he's telling you to do. No matter how hard it's going to be. If, and, and this is, he who waters, waters himself. I will share, and I'm, I'm going to pass the mic because I could be here all day. <laughs> there are times where there's an attack. Mm -hmm. And the attacks are real. Can I, can I just share with my family here? The attacks are real. The Lord said, I anointed you for this time, then I anointed you for the attacks. If he anointed you for the attacks, why are we taking it so personal? Mm. So that is your mayor going from one level to the next and the next. And I truly believe that as long as we're about his business, mm. he's going to take care of your business. Awesome. Powerful. We've already won. We've already won. It's look on look on the bottom of your shoe. That's where he is. That's where the enemy is already. Amen. So, Amen. you know, I have these little God antenna um, up and <laughs> it sounds terrible for me to say, but the best thing I, the, my, everybody's watching for their way to walk in and, and, and share the Lord with people. My thing is, if when you're broken and crying, I'm in. And I, and I it's a, it sounds terrible that I, I'm grateful when I see people broken and crying, but that's where the Lord meets them. That is where he meets all of us, right? Amen. It's not them, it's us. And so be willing to go in there because when somebody's broken and crying, they're, they're the most open they're going to be. And that's where Love, Inc. really excels is because people call us thinking, well, they're going to, pay for something. They're going to fix something. They're going to save me. Um, the way, quite honestly, the way the government and the church is done, we, we have trained people for a handout only. That's what we've trained them for. And, and the Lord has made a move in the last few years. And he goes, no, I want you to go deeper with people. Um, yes, I no, I didn't create what, what they're going through, but I'm going to use it. The Lord will use what we're going through to bring us closer to him. It's always that way. Um, and so we capitalized on that. And, and, you know, when I look out here, a lot, uh, some of you are business owners. You know, you had brought up business owners. We need your partnership. We, we need as much Amen. community connection as we can all get so that we can get behind people and help them. It, it's gonna, it's, it almost takes a miracle to get somebody from here to here. Right. It took a long time to get somebody from here to here where we meet them. And it's going to take that much longer to get them out. It, it is an act of God, a move of God, and it's a lot of work on everybody's point. But it's the most beautiful thing. If you've been involved with transformational stories of yourselves and others, you see how beautiful it is. And it's, it's worth it. It's worth it. Amen. Awesome. Brother Jeff. <laughs> Now, I have to ask, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were just talking about how can we be bold and with our faith and still be effective to where that boldness is not a turnoff, but it can be strategic. Uh, I spent uh, 23 years um, in the military. And in those years, you know, being a Christian in the military, it was kind of tough to, to be as outspoken about your faith because 
you have people from different backgrounds from all over America, and you had to be careful um, the separation that was there. So you ask yourself, you know, how you uh, capitalize on the opportunity and how can you be taxful to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And one of the things that um, the Lord has helped me with through all these years when someone comes up is, you know, being, you know, filling the Holy Ghost, finding out what is needed, but not being afraid to just talk to the people, but we all have a testimony. And we can always testify to those people about where, where we were and where God brought us from. You know, so sometimes you, we can be fear, have that fear, like, what am I going to say? Well, testify to them because you find out when you start testifying to them, you start feeling that Holy Ghost come up, the presence of God come up on you, and it's, the word just going to come out of your mouth. Then you realize, like, what did I just say? So I think it, it becomes a lot for us that, you know, Yes, there's a little intimidation. Am I going to tell them about the Holy Ghost in Walmart? Yes, you can. You know, uh, but you just got to capitalize on the opportunity that God uh, allowed you. It may be, you know, in a drive through yeah. you, you don't know, but you just got to capitalize on the opportunity. And don't be afraid. God is with us. Amen. Amen. And, and from what I know, people want to hear what, what's going on because they have no hope, but the hope is in Jesus Christ. Mm. Amen. Amen. You know, Andy, we talked about, awesome. We talked about being bold and, and how, you know, we can uh, be strategic with that boldness. You know, I found that people are always open to prayer. It's, it's hard for a person to just say, no, I don't want you to pray with me. Uh, you can almost always have an open door through prayer. What is it that you guys do through Hands for Healing in addition to serving to really capitalize on those open doors? Um, well, one thing that Freddie had mentioned was one of our mottos is not, we're not here just to give you a hand up. We're here to help give you a hand, a hand out, but to give you a hand up. Right. And I think that comes through when they come through. We've had people come through and go, I don't want food today. I've just come for prayer. Wow. Um, I mean, wouldn't that be great if we could get even more of that going? But we just have to be open to whatever the Lord provides. We we get people that from all walks of life, all ages of life. And I think that boldness in the Holy Ghost when we're out there or we're at Walmart or wherever, just to let our light shine. And whether we're handing out food or we're just telling a story. But I heard a while back, a few years ago, a message was, you know, they may not receive the gospel, but they can't argue with your testimony. That's right. And when you start telling them your testimony, guess what? If you live for God, your testimony is going to be talking about God and telling them about God. And you can get that in without offending them with the word of God. Right. Because your light should shine so much that it, they're going to see the word of God in us but let our light shine so much that they'll come and ask us more and more questions. And then once that door is open, then you can to show them the word of God. But your testimony is your testimony. They can't argue with it. Right. You know, they can say, well, the Bible says this or the Bible says that or so-and-so says this. This is what happened to me. Right. You know, God filled me with the Holy Ghost. It, you came too late to tell me I can't talk in tongues. You know what I'm saying? You've come too late to tell me that there's no miracles. Right. You've come too late to say somebody can't be healed of cancer. You've come too late. You know, that, that was 40 years ago. All right? So our testimony will open that door and I think that's how we do it. Awesome. Do you... Amen. Awesome. Do you have enough volunteers or can you use more help at Hands for Healing? That's a setup question, y'all. That's... We're having a ministry fair Sunday. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> we can put a commercial in right here. <laughs> um, well, a lot of times the, the problem is because of the strenuous activity that we do. Um, we're loading food. It could be 20, 30, 40 pounds of food into somebody's car. And I know some people can't do that. And right now, I mean, we have other things at times, but that's what I need help with. Mm -hmm. Can you stand out there for four hours lifting 30 pounds 
and I've had a lot of people come say they can do it, and they don't never come back. So, <laughs> um, but I have people that are in their 70s and 80s that are out there, and they're doing the best they can, and they're working, and they're trying, and I definitely appreciate all of my volunteers and all their hard work, but so that's a uh, open-ended question, yes and no. Yeah. Yes, if they can do the work. I don't need 50 uh, volunteers for the parking lot. Right. <laughs> I need people that can live. It sounds like you're saying you need a lot of strong young men to help. Yes, we do. <laughs> and I don't know if you're aware of this. We now have um, some volunteers from across the street. Awesome. And we're averaging between 10, 15 of the uh, young Mormons coming over and helping us with our family. Awesome. That's we talk so talking about awesome. churches getting together. They have come over here, and now they're out here with us running. Awesome. And they're young. They're 18, 19, 20. And, uh, and they've been coming and helping, and that's been just awesome. God has just opened the door. They were nosy. They came over and said, what are y'all doing? <laughs> and, Isn't that something? And we're like, that's how you get them, too, even with the truth, you know? Where do you go to church? That's how somebody got me. I said, where do you go to church? And that was, here we are 40 years later. But... You know, it just takes being nice to somebody. You know, what are y'all doing? When I explain what we're doing, and then we've grown to 10 or 15 of them, and so we've got over 30-something volunteers. And Wow, that's amazing. So good. Thank you, Andy. That's amazing. I know our time's getting away from us, but I want to just ask this question, Mayor, and we'll follow up with the rest of the panel. But, you know, in the work that you do in the community and the leadership of our, our city, what would you say is the top three needs that the community has from faith-based organizations like a church? So there, there are many needs. Um, and I'm, I'm going to hit it from the spiritual warfare side. Okay. I, and I'm going to enlist each and every one of you. I served in the Marine Corps. And by the way, thank you for your service, brother. Thank you for yours. And um, I, I say that because there is a spiritual warfare that's going on within our city. And so I'm going to enlist each and every one of you. The number one need is for you to take hold of your neighborhoods and continue to pray and walk in your neighborhoods declaring the blood of Jesus Christ in your neighborhood. Amen. Let us take each and every area because that is our garden. You declare, you remove the evil one or the little demonic things that are going on in your neighborhoods. And then as you continue to walk your neighborhoods, declare that territory for the Lord. I can guarantee you that no evil, mm -hmm. demonic forces will go anywhere that you're declaring the blood of Jesus Christ on. Amen. Number one need. Number two, I'd like to encourage, because I'm encouraged here today. I'm looking at a group of our youth. Yes. And I want to address each and every one of you. We have been praying for you. You are the generation that's going to rise up for Jesus Christ. Yes. And today, you've been enlisted into the United States Kingdom of God. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. You are going to declare the blood of Jesus in your schools. Yes. You're going to be bold in your schools. I can't go to your school and preach the gospel, but you can preach the gospel in your school. Amen. Do it with a boldness. Do it with a fervor because that's the second need. We need to be in our schools. Amen. That. Have you ever heard of Dove Bible Club? Yes. Their work, their ministry work is 
with children. Mm -hmm. That is a generation that's rising up. Each and every one of you have a responsibility in your schools. Take that seriously and remember, be faithful in that. Number three, the third need. I truly believe when Jesus said, they will know you are my disciples. By what? Your fruits. By how much love we have for one another, mm -hmm. right? Amen. The more that they see, and I say they, people outside in our community, see us lock arms with other churches, work together, mm. whether it's different events, the more they see the love that we have for one another, they're going to gravitate to that love. That is the need in our community. We're not demonstrating love. Everyone is working towards their own goal. May I share a story? Yep. It'll be a short one. There's a gent. Well, most of you already know this. <laughs> I'm short about. <laughs> there was a gent. I'm trying to think of his name. His Joel... A, a, a famous, um, a famous violinist, right? I think he was a violinist. He had a concert in Washington D.C., and I'll, I'll pass on the information to you. But what was interesting is, after the concert, they decided to do a social study. So they went into the subway. It's called the Metro in Washington D.C. In New York City, I was raised, it's called the subway. And so he went, oh no, he was a violinist. Did I say violinist? Yeah. So he was out and he did such a complicated uh, ensemble. And a thousand people walked by. And a handful, handful stood there to listen to that ensemble. People paid over $100 to listen to this to this man in concert. The people that actually stopped and listened to him were so blessed. There was such a huge blessing by them listening to that musician. Think about that. A thousand people were going about their business because we're so busy. Mm. We're so mission oriented. We don't stop to smell the roses. We don't stop to recognize who may need a loving hand. We're thinking that we're in a mission. And listen, I'm, I'm watering to myself because I, I have a complex schedule. But I want to be in a place where I see a need and I want to fill that need. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine me not waiting to hear the lovely sounds of that violinist? I love music. We need to have a tuned ear to what the Lord is telling us. Mm. We need to stop sometimes and forget about the schedule. Because I'll tell you this, God has messed up my schedule on more than one occasion. But it is an anointed time Amen. when you stop and minister to someone. If there's anything I could share today that will encourage you. Is for you to be faithful in the little things. If you don't know what you're supposed to be doing out in the mission field, whether it's your job or anything else, start with something. Start with maybe you'll be at the grocery store and you'll see someone. And just, hey, exchange pleasantries. You go to the beach. You go to the pizza shop. Wherever you go, there's always an opportunity that that person does not have a relationship with God. And if they do, team up and tag hit someone else. Yeah. Right? Now you're joined together with someone that, hey, you're a believer? Let's all do, we're all in this together. So I've taken up so much of your time, but I am, I am passionate about the mission field. And you are so right. The mission field is here and now. Right here. More in 24. There's always more. Amen. So good. Thank you, Mayor. So I'm not.
not a preacher. You hit that well. <laughs> that well. So if I had anything to add, it, w it would be that um, time is short. I mean, I don't think you have to be a theologian to just feel the, feel the yeah. time is short. We're running out of time to be able to reach the people we need to reach. And, the, and the, the one good thing that I saw come out of COVID was it bubbled up what was wrong in this world. It bubbled up what was mm -hmm. broken and nasty. It brought it out into the light. Uh, and we didn't need to run from it. We need to address it. We need to help. And so probably the biggest thing for all of us to learn how to do and to continue doing is to learn how to love others the way Jesus did, does, which isn't, it, it's, you know, it's a fine line because if you enable everybody on this side, I'm not pointing to you, but if you enable over here, you're helping them stay where they're at and they're going to look at you like you're God and they are not going to find the God of the universe. And if you're a Nazi over here and you're like, they made bad choices, that this is, you know, they, they deserve what happened to them. If, if you're like that, they're never going to see the Lord. They're going to see that. And so I had to start praying. When I got affiliated with Love, Inc., I realized that I, that I was more of a Nazi. I, I'm definitely not the enabler. I was more of the Nazi. And, and teaching, learning how to love people the way Jesus did and then teaching others to do that and and loving people where they're at. And, um, you know, when I, when I look at your food ministry, which is so amazing, the one thing that pops in my head is how to get people involved in their own story. How to get, you, you, you have hundreds of people that could help you move that food, mm. and they're right there. And it just be, you know, I, I have these brilliant ideas all the time. It's a thing to pray into. How could the people we're serving Get involved in their own story, and and I think they would love working with you. I think, you know what, that that's the most beautiful thing because then they get pulled into your ministry, they get ha they hang out with you, and they see Christ in you, and that that's super exciting. Amen. Brother Jeff, what do you see the top three things in the group that you work with? Uh, I'll try to be really brief. Um, I pick it back on what the mayor was saying. Number one thing I would think is prayer. We need to get back to praying. We need to be the apostolic that God asked us to be to take this city through prayer. I think number two will be uh, uh, as souls begin to come into you no know, east wind, it's up to us to you know to set the temple of the house. Yep. Amen. The praise and the worship, and then when they walk through these doors and they feel the power and the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's number two. And the third thing I have is uh, don't compromise the word of God. Right. And the day that we stand in there, if we can't uh, uh, sugarcoat it. We have to preach the word of God, teach the word of God. Mm -hmm. and that's the top three for me. Awesome. Sister Annie. Um, well, to add on, I guess, to what they say, and we have, we've had people that, drive through, well, what can I do to help? I'm like, park your car. And, <laughs> and we have people, and they're from all different churches too, you know. Um, sometimes I look and I'm like, well, we got 30 people and there's four that go to our church, mm -hmm. you know, because they go to different churches or they're just people who were coming through the line and they become faithful volunteers. Um, one of the biggest things, like he was saying, prayer we hear prayer a lot, but there's a word that comes after that prayer in the Bible that we tend to push aside, and it's called fasting. And I'm guilty. <laughs> oh, um, Lord, I'm guilty. And the Lord has been dealing with me because it's like, but I, I want so this, and it's like, this comes by prayer and fasting. Mm. This, you know, we can't have what we want without doing what we need to do. And I think it was Brother um, Urshan had said that um, at the WINS conference. Mm -hmm. We got to give up that thing that's stopping us from doing what God wants us to do. And if it means pushing a plate aside or, you know, talking to somebody in boldness, we just got to do it. And the biggest thing to remember as Christians is the devil's not going to tell you to pray for somebody. Unless you're not living right. Well, that, that's a whole different story. But <laughs> if you're a Christian and you feel, hey, go talk to that person, that's not your flesh and it's not the devil. Right. 
So we need to learn to listen to that little voice that says, go do this or go do that. And, and then God can really use us. Sometimes it's just saying hi to somebody and they can feel it. There was a lady at Publix the other day and I just said something to her. And then she came back and asked me like, where do you go to church? And she was supposed to be here. She's coming, but um, her name's Debbie, pray for her. But, you know, just being nice to somebody, saying hi to somebody is the biggest thing. Prayer, fasting, and putting the word out there, I believe is the biggest things we can do. Awesome, so good. Let's give our panel a big hand. Let's stand to our feet. This has been so good. I want to thank all of you for coming out tonight. Just thank you for having a heart for reaching our community. Our next Cafe and Conversation Night is going to be on February the 14th. It's going to be a special Valentine's Day Cafe and Conversation. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. You're going to want to be here. But I think it'd be great tonight if we would just lift our hands, lift our voices, and let's just ask that the Lord would help us to not just hear this, but to also be doers of the word. Would you just say, Lord, let this be a part of my commitment to you in 2024. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you would help us to just have a burden for our community. Help us, Lord, to have boldness to just step out and to reach out across the aisle, to reach out, Lord, in our homes, our neighborhoods, our schools, in the workplace, in the marketplace. Oh, Lord, help us to be a light that shines. Help us, Lord, to be a city that is set on a hill. Help us, Lord to have that courage and that boldness to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. For we know that indeed the time is short, but this is the day that you have given us to do the work. Let us work while it is day, for the night cometh when no man can work. And we'll be careful to give you the praise for all things. Everybody said in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.